Good evening. Today is February 22nd, 2022, and this is the meeting of the Hubison CPC, and it is 536, and we are opening our meeting. Um, we will start a roll call. Sandra Barry here. Alice Lipdahl here. Dolores Ordway here. Susan Worth here. Hilla Larson here. Okay, great. So with the five of us, we do have a quorum, and we will start right with our agenda. <clears throat> So I did not print out the minutes from the last meeting. I don't know if anyone else did, but I know I did read them, but I didn't print them out for tonight. Do we want to table them to our next meeting or do we want to discuss them tonight? Why don't we table them in the interest of time? Here's okay. a thought. Okay, that's great. So and I really do... haven't read them, so I would have to abstain. I and guess. Kayla just sent them out again. Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> that was a good move. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, someone they're back the from motion. January, and they are lengthy. Um, yeah, two from, pages. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if someone just wants a motion that we table them, I think we have to motion that. I'll, motion. I'll second Make it. Susan Worth, second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Sandra Berry, aye. Susan Dolores, Worth, aye. Dolores Ordway, aye. Okay. So um, tonight we do have two visitors with us who um, are from the Habitat for Humanity and welcome again, Carolyn Reed and Deb Reed. And they have presented an application um, requesting CPA funds through the Hubison CPC. And this is in support of the um, house that is being built by Habitat for Humanity, which is on Ragged Hill Road in Hubison. And so um, I have reviewed it. I, everyone has had a copy of it. Um, would one of you like to speak about the application? About starting with Deb. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, starting with Carolyn, I'm sorry. Because I know she one of us comments. Okay. Either read is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for allowing us to submit the application and thank you to you and the town for the initial $20,000. So the initial 20,000 was used for site work um, primarily to put in the septic system. A lot of the towns we build in do have public sewer. So it did help us to put in the septic and do the initial site work. And we're um, well into the build now. We've been partnered with Monty Tech and the partnership is going great. They have lots of students out there um, and we're now moving inside the build. We, on warm days, we still might be doing some siding but otherwise we'll be inside. Um, and I just wanna note that we do have a mid build ceremony on March 5th and at 10 a.m. So you guys are all welcome to come. You'll be able to sign the studs with your nice. best wishes for the family and the prospective homeowner will be there. Her name is Kara. She has four children, two live at home. One daughter is disabled. And so the house will be, um, it's designed for accessibility and it will be accessible. Oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah. That's yeah. And she has started on her sweat equity. She actually started before, even when she applied, because she wanted to know what it was all about. So I think she'll be a great addition to town. And um, Deb is the chair of the local project committee. And we have one of the local project committee members who's the family advocate for Kara. So she's going to help her learn everything about Hubbardston. Um, and then we also had another member of the LPC that was on the family selection committee. So she helped to select and we did have a whole bunch of applications. We came down to about six who were financially qualified and ready. And then Kara had the highest need. So that's why she was selected. So um, our request is for $25,000 to help us um, complete the home and complete it on time. Our goal is to be finished with the house by the end of June. So we need Monty Tech to be done with all the licensed trades before they leave school and then we can do any of the punch list items and to close. And we absolutely want um, Kara's children to be in school before the next school year. So they're gonna be coming, two of the children will be going to school. Um, so the LPC did have an original goal of raising $35,000 in local fundraising. We did find it hard, and Deb can speak to this, to do fundraisers during COVID. So they did a paint night. Um, Hubbardston Candle Company is doing a fundraiser right now and donating a portion of every sale. Um, there was a Pampered Chef fundraiser. And we've looked at a couple others, but it was kind of hard to plan them due to COVID. Um, we have had some success 
the LPC sent out letters to all the area businesses. And at first we got just 750, so we got some donations, but they just resent it and um, with a matching campaign. So Habitat has a long-term donor who said they would match up to 7,000 in um, donations. And we got a nice large donation from that. So that put us a little over 5,000. So total we're at um, 14,466 raised to date, but we think it's, we're gonna be short of the 35,000 um, that we need to, to, to raise for this. And we have seen that costs in some areas are exceeding budget. Um, we did up it a little because of the supply chain issues, but then we have a hard time with like saying how much it's gonna be for the well. So we put an average amount in, it was a little higher than we thought it was going to be. Um, building materials have been a little bit higher. We did have some issues even getting shingles for the house. Uh -huh. um, so we've had some issues with that. So we're over a little bit. Um, and I do want to say that we have a 0% construction loan. So we did get a couple of very large grants. We got a grant from a foundation out of Boston for $50,000. Um, and that's going to come in April. And so we'll take money off the line of credit and then pay it off once we get that one. And we did get the Federal Home Loan Bank um, Affordable Housing Program grant for $38,000. And that's the same thing. We'll take it off the line of credit and then pay it back. Um, so with the 25,000, I understand that um, any CPA request would need to go to town meeting, which will happen towards the end of our build, but we will continue building. We would just need to take it off the line of credit and pay that off before we close on the house. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, and I think that's everything. I think, you know, I just want to say again that um, I think it's a good partnership. It's a great partnership between Habitat and the town. We've loved working with the town. And for the CPA side, um, we're gonna continue to hit our goals. So we're contributing to the goal of getting Hubbardston towards the 10% of affordable housing. We'd have to build a few more to be able to do that, but at least you're on the way and adding to that affordable housing goal. Um, we are promoting a socioeconomic environment with a diversity of income, ethnicity, religion, and age. We, the application process is wide open and obviously we don't discriminate based on any of those factors. Um, we did make the house harmonious in design with the surrounding community. Um, it's gonna be smaller than the houses directly on either side, but it does fit with the neighborhood. And it's meeting our goal and your goal of having affordable housing in the same neighborhood with market rate housing. So not set off somewhere else, but in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so that's all I had to say in, uh, about our request and talking about our request. So I don't know if there are questions or Alice and Deb wanna say a few words. I just, um, I just also wanted to mention the fact that, you know, we, you may be aware or not, but this house continues to stay as an affordable home so that if it should ever um, be sold, it would still go to um, a family that is in that same category um, bracket of needing affordable housing. So it's always gonna stay that way. Um, and there's a huge benefit. I'm gonna steal a little of um, Alice's thunder here, I think, but um, the benefit that we have of having a, a home being built there is that we'll now be able to have some um, tax revenue, which we have not been able to have. You know, the town has owned that piece of property for many decades and we've gotten no income from it. And now we will have some income from it. So that's another positive aspect to having these really nice homes that are being built um, through Habitat and elsewise. I, I really don't have a lot to add except to say the housing committee I mean, I'm really, really aware of everything that's going on. Um, and it has been just, well, you know, think of, think of your churches, think of anybody else that's tried to raise money this year. It's just been a hard time to do it. Um, we've been pretty successful. We actually have somebody willing to donate another piece of land if we want to do it all over again. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my gosh. Anyway, um, they've really tried hard. It is a really challenging environment. This is a particularly challenging lot. Um, 
it was just full of giant boulders and you know they had to also <laughs> contend with you know the the rogue school bears a huge responsibility for building it most of it and they've also contended with the covid mess right mm -hmm. so this has not been an ideal time to to uh to build a house <laughs> um i just think an anecdote which i guess i'm free to share is the this lady with the four children raised those four children in a trailer in a mobile oh. home hmm. so you know, and she's worked at trying to qualify for what, three or four years. Um, so it's a huge, huge benefit to her. And it was important to me that we try to add some kids to the school. So I just think it's, it's great. It is also an added expense to make it handicap accessible, which we absolutely have to do and wouldn't discriminate and not do, right? Mm -hmm. And they need to build a shed because that does not have a conventional cellar. So there's a few anticipated costs um, the amount they were able to, to get and the amount they were able to save, you know, through, through all of their sources, we could have never done this without Habitat for Humanity doing Absolutely. it. Just yeah. have so I hope you'll support it. I think it's reasonable. I mean, the 20,000 was kind of a shot in the dark in the last year. I mm -hmm. mean, I knew they had to put a septic in and septics cost at least that much, right? And that wouldn't you you know that that would be an add-on, and then I didn't know what we'd be able to raise, but I did think COVID would be out of here in the fall, like a lot of people. For me, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> my people. Okay, more behind the is one hundred percent behind it, and we'll support it. I'm thinking you're talking to. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I have I have two questions. Um, they're all kind of positive. Number one, this application. I mean. All we are deciding on is does it meet the criteria? The prior one met the criteria, so that's a no-brainer. I mean, it, it meets right. the criteria. We just have to vote on it, okay? Because mm -hmm. all we do is pass it through to the town. Um, my question to Carolyn is, do you do a lot of um, builds with like the local folk schools? Because that's such a wonderful experience for the students as well as sorts of cost savings for for you or for anyone. It is. Out. Yeah, it's completely a win-win. I think the only constraint we have is our timing has to be right. So we need to have the foundation ready to go September, October, so they can finish by the end of the school year. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've been really successful working with Monty Tech. Oh, Monty Tech. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's on the front page of the uh, Gardner News about, um, yeah. it mentions the Hubbardston lot. That's a picture of it. And I thought, perfect timing. That's I cool. know. Isn't it awesome? And the students, yeah. 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 So we had great article. two houses in Fitchburg with them, two in Ashburnham. They held in Athol. Yeah. So we have a great, great partnership with them. Um, we've also partnered with Neshoba Tech before and Minuteman Tech. We're not <coughs> quite as grooved with them as we are with Monty Tech. We have a really good partnership and we've learned how to work together really well. And the other group that we partner with, and we haven't been able to during COVID, is Shriver Job Corps. Oh, yeah, they're carpentry students and they have um, they have painting, a painting program there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we've partnered with them in the past and we look to do that again because those are it's non-traditional students and it's great on the job training for them as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, those were um, and again, you do know that June 7th is the town meeting. So even though when we vote tonight, it still has to go before the town. Right. So, yep. um, so that sounds good to me. Does anyone have any questions before we vote? Um, Susan, do you feel um, being the treasurer is, do you want to talk money a little bit before we no, vote? No, the beauty is more? of the buckets, that's the one that has enough money for that. I mean, so it's ready to go, even though we have to go through the town vote process. So it doesn't even need to, it will be fiscal year 2023, but it will be funded like right this minute, you know, oh, okay, so that's great. good news. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just, I'm just curious. Um, you say there's no cellar under this, but yet you're talking about a cellar being built and the house is already built or how does that work? Is it electric heat or what type of heating is it? So no, we did end up doing a slab for this we one. Did. Okay. So we don't ever do garages. Um, well, there's been one case where a town or neighborhood required it, but we don't do a garage. If we're able to, we do a, a cellar. So if the grade allows us to, and if we don't hit a lot of rock, we will I do know. a cellar. 
And in this case, we couldn't, it was cost uh -huh. prohibitive. And so we will do a shed. I see. So I'm is, it, is it electric right. heat? Is this electric heat you have in here? So this, we will have solar panels. Um, oh. Right now, this one is going to, so it'll have solar and we are gonna have um, propane based heat, but oh. they could switch to mini splits. Okay, in just interested. Yeah. Yeah, so we did many splits in Ashburnham, and um, we're still working on this house design, working well with many splits. Oh, okay. That's good, especially with solar. Yeah, you know, exactly. It'll cover, it'll cover the cost of it, or the good, yep. point, good part of it. Anyone else have any other questions before we, uh, someone um, motions to accept the application? I move that we accept the $25,000 application from Habitat for Humanity. Um, and do I need to say anything else? I guess when they write the warrant, we would say to be used in purchasing materials for the home on Ragged Hill Road as in the letter, would that be the phrase to use? Because that's what it is, right? Okay. I would, I would say so, yes. Yeah, so I, I move that we move that forward. Is there a second? I second it. All in favor, Sandra Berry, yes. Alice Nicole, yes. Susan Worth, yes. Dolores Ordway, yes. Bill Larson, yes. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, so what we will do, like you know, we'll write an article, we'll put it on our town warrant, and um, it will go to town vote <clears throat> on June 7th. And again, you can promote it however you want to the town, flyers, put things out, um, you know, I, can they do a blast email? I don't know if we can do that, but we can always do something to let the town know this is gonna be out on the um, warrant anyways for the town meeting, um, but you have a, you can advocate for it however you want. I know you came last time <clears throat> and spoke um, in, you know, on behalf of it, but um, there's other ways to get word out too. Great, well, thank you. Thank you all so much for your support for the build and for Kara. And I'm well, really excited for doing about this. It. I think it's exciting to have this in our town and I'd like to see more of them. I think this is a great way to meet that 10%. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it really is. Yeah, for sure. So thank you all so much. You're okay. welcome. Thank, thank, you. thank you for attending. Okay. Sure thing. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So Bye. we'll keep our meeting for a little while later <laughs> if everyone's fine with that. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thanks. All right. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's five of us. Okay, so I don't see two now. Um, so do you want to go over, um, Susan? I, I will tell you, I tried to print that PDF out like four times and all I all it printed was blank. So I don't know what was going on. Oh, I know. That's but I thought I'd just give you the raw data. And from my perspective, are, are you asking me for just an overview here, real quick? Because I'd love to get the other warrants voted on tonight, so they yeah can no go ahead. We, no we might as well absolutely yeah. um, and I okay go ahead we'll start with that okay so from my perspective there were six items I would like to cover four warrants five votes and then the report if if you I sent out the report only this morning I had the rough, it's a rough draft so you look great did every did everybody get it yes. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I thought you did a great job, and I thought it was really sweet of you to um, mention Stephanie in there. Well, and also, thank you for doing your celebration, and Alice, did I have it right about Fidelity Bank? I mean, why not yes. give good press when people are, are, you know, giving things? In fact, wouldn't it be neat if we could get somebody to donate the shed, you know, as a, yeah, it's just a thought for the house. But, um, okay, so if you have any other thoughts on that, um, Tony wants them as soon as possible, but how about uh, by the end of the week or, or do we not need the time for to review this? I'd love to get it off to Tony, the new to, assistant. To, to do what, to vote on? on oh no, the, this is for the, the uh, report, just the for the report. report. Oh. No, I thought that I read the report. I thought it was very nice. I think yes. it's great. Are we missing anything? Is there anything that needs to be corrected or added I'm or whatever? Notice. So I think we're set. So I, I will go ahead and then forward that on to Tony, whom I've not met. Maybe I'll drop the hard copy off in person just so I can meet her. Yeah, um, well, she's really nice. Oh, yeah, I understand. And um, the other thing is, 
this warrant is $25,000, which even if we had no money coming in, but which we do come July 1st, we still could fund it from the community housing. And that would leave a balance in the housing of 15,823. So you're not totally depleted. And I'll explain how I got there. All right, Alice? Yes, please but, do. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, let, let's just go over the warrants first. Oh, go so, ahead. That's fine. Yeah, the warrants for 25,000 would logically come out of community housing. So that's one of the decisions that needs to be made. And I wanted to get the wording right for the warrant. So it's right straight from the letter. Another right. warrant we need to deal with is the um, fiscal year 23 debt on the library. That's 20,972. It's payment four of five payments. And I'm thinking the logical place for that is the historic budget. And I believe in the original request, it said either historic or undesignated reserve. So I'm thinking it would be good to take it out of the historic bucket. And there's the enough. other, okay, go ahead, question, somebody? Yeah, there's, there's enough in there, in the historic? There budget? will be as of July 1, because yeah. the, the, yeah. And I'm, I did all of my estimates on the low side. Um, just to be sure we could cover it. The other warrant that we need to fund is the debt obligation on the Rainbow Playground for fiscal year 2023, and that's 32,520. And that would come out of undesignated reserve. So the housing one comes out of the housing, the debt on the um, library roof, the historic building will, would, I, I'm recommending it come out of the historic bucket and the other mm -hmm. one out of undesignated reserve. And then we, there is one more warrant, which technically I guess we need to vote on, and that's for appropriating the estimated fiscal year 2023 annual local CPA revenue. So technically we need to vote on each of those things. We yeah. already have the Habitat one legit, right? That's <laughs> voted on, yay. Mm -hmm. What we needed to decide was, are we okay with it coming out of a community housing budget? I'm looking at Alice because that's kind of your no, I think, no, I think that's fine. I think it makes fine. sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. All right. right. And so if we take yeah. it out of the housing bucket, that will leave 15,800 is what you're saying. Right. And that would be okay. after it's funded both with our tax revenues and the state match. And that doesn't even include the interest. So we're definitely, we're okay. We've got enough money for that. Okay. The, We've come the, out of his, I'm sorry. Yeah, out of housing. So the decision about the uh, library debt out of history, does that make sense? Yeah, it depends what, what our strategy is. Do we want to build up the undesignated reserve? Or we could take it out of that and build up the historic. But right now, I feel we've been pretty heavy on historic between the church okay. and the library roof. So I'm thinking that would be the one to go on that. Should we take them separately or do you want to know how we're going to pay for it? <laughs> Well, no, my question is, so what is the balance right now before you make that library payment on the historic? Okay, um, on the historic, as it is, it was oh, 16225 So that's on that first sheet. But the money that will be put into it come July 1 is a total of what's in there, and then we're gonna add $11,757 between the 10% from the new revenues and the 10% of the st state match. Yeah. So if we take the money out of there to fund the history, we'll still, that's a big chunk. It's $20,972. So you're talking but, to fund the library. Yes, the, the debt. This is four of five. One more year in that and we're out of the woods. Yep. 7,000 would be the balance in historic, which isn't a lot. But right. in my view, I think, like I said, we've been pretty heavy on historic and I'm cognizant of your time constraints here. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, we can go back and vote on these, but that's the background there. The big one, the uh, warrant for the uh, playground debt, is 32,520. 
and it's two of five. So we're just not even quite in the middle of that. But on the undesignated reserve right now, and it's low, we knew it was going to be low because we, you know, mm -hmm. did a lot of projects. It's $22,494 now. When July 1st rolls around, between tax revenue, 65% of that, and 65% of the state match, which was a total of $30,000 this year. So it was significant. Um, that's 98.9. And then if we deduct the 32,520, it leaves undesignated reserve at 66,394. And all of these numbers are very low because if you'll notice, she wrote 87,440 revenue. Um, so far, it's only February. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, the bulk of it, I'm, sh I'm guessing is in, but there will be more, but I'm only working on the numbers that I know we have for sure. So I know we can cover all those. Can you say those incoming values and balance values again? Okay. Um, how about, I can, I can write this up and send it to everybody later, but I'll go, go back. Just for the yeah. undesignated, yeah. Yeah, un especially on de undesignated. Right now, there's 22,494 in money available. And coming in is a total of 117,570 between the um, tax revenues and the state match. And 65% of that is 76,420. So if you add the 22 and the 76, you get it come with 98,9. And then you have to deduct the fiscal year 23. 32, 520. I know I'll write it down and send it to everybody, but I didn't have time to get it done today to, no, to make fine. it nice and neat. But we, we can do it. Does that answer your question though, Kayla? Thank so you. the revenues are tax revenue. And actually I haven't added in interest because I don't know what the interest is. And I won't know that until Kelly does the CP2 form and she has to do that at the end of June. <clears throat> So mm -hmm. she calculates what's been collected up to that point, adds the state match in, which we already know, and then adds interest, which right. last year was $12,000, which was, that surprised me. That was very good. And, and Kelly is responsible for writing the warrant for appropriating the estimated um, fiscal year revenues. So the only question. Yep. Yeah. So I wasn't able to print that out. So I'm trying my best to follow it as much as I can. But where, uh, where okay. is the money coming out for the church? Or have you oh, already? That's already. That's you've already that's, taken that out. That's already allocated. Oh, that's history. Okay. So you've yeah, already no. taken that out. Okay. No, that's a good question though because that was such a big chunk. That's why we kind of feel poor. And I think yeah. one of our objectives as as a committee would be to build up our accounts. Obviously the debt obligations, but just think we're almost done with the library. Yeah, we're yeah, almost, yeah. you know. Well, so and, and again, I always say there was a ton of money in there because we had no projects for a long time. Yeah. And then um, all of a sudden, wham, it was okay. a busy year. Yeah. yeah. But I'm proud of our work. I think, like I said, when Ryan comes back, he won't recognize that part of town. New playground, new church. You know, it's, mm -hmm. and I saw a truck there today and they were unloading something. I don't know if it had to do with the siding of the church. So who knows? Maybe they can they, actually start. They're going to start with the doors and then the sill. And oh, I, I think I read in your um, your thing today something about eighteen thousand dollars for the church, and it was a question mark. Is that the structural engineer money that was used for that, or no? The no? question mark was um, Kelly. There was a forty dollar deduction. I said, "What was that?" And I, I said, "And." It, she deducted it from the church and that was the wrong place to take that from. It was supposed oh. to come out of admin because that was actually paid to her to be present at the special town meeting. I so see. that's, that, you know, because I 40 bucks, I thought that doesn't make sense. So it was out, she took it out and she asked, she says, I will need to reclassify it. It's on that page. Oh. That hey, makes sense. Did anybody else see that page? I'll need to reclassify that $40 charge. Oh. Yeah. She said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it on the bottom. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. But she says one of one. But anyway, that's what that's about. Because I thought that doesn't make sense. And as far as the others, admin, they took all the KP law and deducted it from the administration fund, which it's there for that. 
but I was hoping they would take it out of the town account, but they didn't. So <laughs> that's all right. We still have enough, you know, that's so fine. I'm not complaining. And the other thing, the library is starting some work. So some of that money has gone. Oh, the other thing that we would, if we can, and Sanda, you will know the answer to this, mm -hmm. that the Curtis Field, can that, is that a surplus at this point in the open space? So what I would do is, um, I think we should write an article to move it back. But okay. I, haven't, I, I haven't heard back from anyone from baseball whether they're fully done with that project. So we can write in the article or we can agree to tonight to move that 12,000. Is that what it is or whatever it was? Yes, 12,026 or something like that. Yep. Yeah. So we can we can make a motion to move that back into the, okay. uh, the fund. And when I hear back from baseball, if they say, no, 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 the second part of the project's being done this spring, then we just will remove it from the, the uh, warrant. Okay, because that would help the open space um, Open space Absolutely. and recreation, you know, it's just sitting there. Okay, so we actually have then one. So why doesn't someone make a motion for that then? Or do you not want a motion yet? I'm ready if everybody else is, because I, I yeah. just keep on looking at the clock and I'm thinking you're no, going to no, be no, okay. No, don't worry about that. Um, okay. So if we motion, so I saw your notes here, so we can motion for the... Um, 12,000 from the uh, baseball field to get moved back. And also the playground came under budget by like $4,800. We can motion because the playground's all done. We can motion to move that money back too. Are you sure about that? Was that the sign money? No, that sign's already been paid. Because it but looks like 100% of it has been used up. We had a, we had like a four, we came under budget, right under $5,000. Even, that's interesting. Even including the sign. Wow, that's great. You know what? I'll look into that because it looked like they took 1100 out originally for the issuance fee, and then it was 44 something for the other site work and so forth, right? So that money you think is extra? Because I was thinking it was a sign. No, I think but, I, uh, I, don't I haven't take checked it. in a while, but the last time yeah. I checked, um, we had come under budget by, you know, like $4,800. And you said, well, let's just let it sit there for a little bit, just in case, you know, there are, are costs, which was smart. But uh, guys, stop. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I'll look into that. But I know for sure. Well, we, let's do the one on the 12000 for the Curtis Field. And if, okay. if they don't respond, like I know you've asked them several times. Yeah, yeah, so, I okay, baseball, but. I move that we um, take the surplus from Curtis Field Recreational Baseball Project, $12,026.50, and move it back to the open space account. Second. All in favor? Okay. Okay. Sanderberry, yes. Yeah. Also, so okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Susan Worth, yes. <laughs> yes. Bill Larson, yes. Hi. So was that a yes? Everybody's okay with that? Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, Rick's out doing the horses, so I'm sort of stuck here. Sorry. Anyway, and then we just formally <clears throat> need to do the other two warrants. Hi. Up here. <laughs> Uh, my dog. <laughs> and she did, didn't close them in the closet or something. <laughs> oh. Well, at least we're not on a plane with crying children, right? <laughs> you know, they act up right when you don't want them to. But anyway, um, so do, uh, does somebody want to? move on the uh, library debt and then somebody on the um, playground debt? Happy to move no. either. But. The playground is back to open space, right? And the library is just to pay the next installment or what's the library? Okay, the, the 12,000 is back to open space and then the library debt or the playground debt are the amounts of 20,972 for the library debt out of historic and 32,520 out of undesignated reserve for the playground debt. But we have to do them separately, I'm sure, right, Santa? 
Yes, so why don't you motion each one separately? Okay, all right. I move that we take $32,520 out of undesignated reserve to pay back fiscal year 2023 debt on the playground note. Uh, Sandberry in favor, yes. Alice Lipdahl, yes. Dolores Ordway, yes. Gail Larson, yes. Susan Worth, yes. So that takes care of that guy. Um, even though it's 32, even though there might be, sorry, 6,000, 4,800 subtracted from that 32, we might not have to pay the full amount. Why would that be? If you said there was an underage on the on the playground. No, so the underage oh, no, the no. underage is just going to go back into the pot. That's it's still the, this is the payment on the loan, the yeah. 32. There were two separate amounts. 50 was taken out of undesignated reserve for site work, et cetera, the sign. And then the 150 was financed. That's a good question, though. I mean, you know, because I deal with this stuff all the time. They were separate. Right, right, they're separate, which was a good move because it gave Santa flexibility to get stuff done and yet we still got the playground, you know, paid for and uh, and that's mentioned in the town report, of course. So um, does somebody want to, should I move on the historic? Go ahead. Sure. Okay, I move that we take $20,972 out of the historic bucket to fund the debt obligation on the library roof fiscal year 2023, which is four or five, just so we keep it in context. Second. Sanderberry, yes. Alice Livedahl, yes. Dolores Ordway, yes. Susan Worth, yes. Dolores, yes. So we have that one done. Do we, do we need to do the one um, for Kelly? Do we formally need to appropriate I mean, it, she does the actual work, but Kelly, to appropriate the estimated fiscal year 2023 annual local CPA revenue. Oh yeah, we're supposed to accept those funds. Okay, so let's just move it. I'll, I'll move that too. Or does somebody else want to do it? I don't care. I mean, move it's it because you've got the number. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't actually, yeah, it's estimate. estimated. You, you just estimate. do it as an estimate. Kelly will, Kelly will actually fill in the number, but... Um, I move that we uh, create a warrant appropriating the estimated fiscal year 2023 annual local CPA revenue per Kelly Pomprian, the um, town accountant, because she has she fills that out in a form to the state, and that's the number we work with. It's called a CP2 form. Are we good without an estimated number? Um, well, it's usually from the year before. For another, in oh. other words, okay, they take what was the year before and then kind of estimate. And I'm guessing they're going to start estimating up because if we have that much money already this year, this last fiscal year, that's more than the fiscal year preceding. It was 68, and now it's 87. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so I'll second that motion without the Can number. You state the motion. Sorry. So I vote yes, Susan Worth, yes. Sandra Dolores Ordway, yes. But Kayla wants you to restate the motion, right? Was that Kayla? Was that, okay. Yeah, could you restate the motion? I'm trying Sorry. to get it down cool. writing. Yeah. Um, I move that we create a warrant appropriating the estimated fiscal year 2023 annual local CPA revenue as per required by law through Kelly Pomprian, the town accountant. They actually, she actually breaks it into the buckets then too, in the, if you look at the warrants from previous yeah, years. Yeah, I, I wondered if that was what the, was the warrant that we're voting on what the percentages of each bucket will be or just that we're accepting the money? They, she oh, automatically, no. she automatically um, puts it into the buckets in the, if you look at past ones, it's the, the okay. formula, but good okay. question. I think I have all my stuff off my, oh yeah, I'm all set. Anybody else? Um, so I'll just go ahead and, and send this to um, David. 
You you writing the articles and sending them to him? Well, um, I saw him the other day, and and I also talked with Kelly the other day on the phone. I said, well, I didn't know. Oh, I did know about the uh, habitat one at that point. I said, well, it's going to be the two debt obligations and the habitat, and then the you know estimated mm -hmm. revenues. So everybody's more or less on board with what, unless we get some surprise. Yeah. But, so what? So what we can do? Because I'm going to scoot out. Um, yep. We can have the, so we don't even need to get this information until April, okay? So maybe we can actually have a meeting and just, you know, tighten everything up, making sure everything's all set um, in April and just make sure we don't have any new, new applications. I don't think we're going to have any new applications. We may not even have time to address another application. But is everyone in favor <clears throat> based on what Kayla um, has got for minutes to review them, say, in three weeks? Um, meet again, maybe we can actually meet in person if we want, um, and just make sure the articles are written the way we want them, and then we can just, because they're not due till like, I think, the 12th of April. Yeah, but it'd be nice to get at least the basic format, you know, in the works, and for the other people who have to process it, too, you know, they can say, okay, check mark, you know. Sure. So, sure. When would that be? What's, what is it? End of, middle of February? M end of March? I would say earlier, I would say like like March 13th or the middle of That's March. right around St. Patrick's. I know you do your big thing there. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm I sure do you like want to do that. that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Um, we could do like, you know, the 15th or 16th of, um, of March and that would be almost a full okay. month that we'd get it to them. If we want, if we want to just tighten up that language, make sure we've gotten it all written because I know we've been kind of rushed tonight, but. Yeah. You can send him a note, you know, that said these are the five articles with um with space savers. That's what we've done in planning. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, that's Absolutely. a good idea. Yeah. You okay. save them. Yeah, and then we can tighten up the language and and then it ends up that um, the board of selectmen has to review the language anyway. So and then right. get back to us if there's a problem. I, I right. heard the date, the drop date, drop dead date was April eleventh. Is this the eleventh? I knew I saw something around the yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. but they do want to have it, you know. As soon as possible. What they're just doing before that, just, right. uh, they, just tightening up the languages. But we're in good shape. That's great. I'm I just, I just so wanted, much. to, I mm -hmm. just wanted to say something. Um, my husband passed away three weeks ago, and <gasps> I'm, oh, I didn't I'm, know, Dolores. Um, yeah, I'm leaving for Florida April second, which would would have been our fifty fifth wedding anniversary. Aww. And um, I'm going to visit many people in the state of Florida while in the next two months after I'm there and um, and then eventually end up up at my house in Florida in the northern part where my son is so that I can clean out things and um, hopefully my daughter and her husband will come with the camper and I can come back with them. But anyway, I have a big thing planned for April, May and maybe into June. So I don't know if I'll be able to be voting. I just thought I'd tell you uh, maybe Danielle Eric Halian will be, you know, available to vote. But anyway, my yeah. husband yeah. Um, passed, so he passed at home from COVID. Believe it or not, not was... not uh, not cancer of the bowel, not Alzheimer's, but actually COVID. That's what took mm. him. Oh, so man. I'm so sorry. This... So I didn't know if you knew this, but I just thought I'd tell you. I didn't know. Yeah. So. People have been wonderful. I think I have 50 cards. I never got so many cards in my life. So oh. it's very nice that I realize the the importance of sending cards to people. I, I've been very lax. I always think, oh, you can just text them or but it's nice to receive cards. So mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. But, That's nice. You've been comforted by so many people. That's nice. Yeah, it is. It's been people from where I worked for 30 years, neighbors, people from all over. So it's been very, and, and young men who were friends with my son, who are now adults, all came to me saying what a, a role model he played in their life um, while That's they were growing up. So that was nice too, because nice. I didn't realize that that it was a lot of people. Impressive. So but anyway, thought I'd say that. So. Okay, uh, I'm going to motion. Well, can someone motion to adjourn? And if you ladies still want to talk, you can. Um, no. But um, we can go from there. Okay. Because you can still talk. I just don't want to keep recording it. Okay. Can someone motion to adjourn? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Okay. I second it. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. 
Okay, bye-bye.